Hello and welcome back or welcome to our YouTube channel. We took a several month hiatus because we moved in with my parents while our home was finished being built. And now we're finally moved in. We got here about six, eight weeks ago and we are settled, kind of getting things furnished. I'm sitting in Cameron's nursery as we speak. It's not fully furnished, but we're getting there. So if you wanna see more and see updates on the house, then follow me on my Instagram. But today I am back with a video to share our newborn must-haves. Cameron is seven months old and it's crazy to us. She is getting so big, growing so fast. We finally feel like we have a good grasp on the things that we love and use all the time. And then there's other things that we bought that we didn't use. So I wanna be here and be a resource to you. I know it's very daunting to set up your registry or just buy things in general because baby stuff is expensive y'all. And if I can help you, then this video is worth it. So I'm gonna start by covering feeding essentials. I won't talk about bottles too in depth. We use the Como Tomo bottles, which I'll put a picture of right here. I just don't wanna recommend a specific bottle because bottles are specific to your baby. Your baby might not like the nipple on one bottle, but love it on another. So if I were to suggest anything, it would be to get the assorted bottle pack that you can get, I think on baby list, I'll link it below. But I know a lot of people get the assorted bottle kit that you can kind of try out different bottles from and see which one your baby prefers. So other feeding essentials that we love, first off, burp cloths. I have tried many brands of burp cloths and I've narrowed down my favorites to three different brands. The number one favorite is the muslin burp cloths from Amazon. These are super inexpensive. I love the size of these. You can really maneuver them into the gap between your baby's face and your chest as you're feeding them. I know a lot of times Cameron is ready to rumble when it comes to feeding. And so I'm trying to get the bottle in her mouth and then I need to shove the burp cloth in between. And if the burp cloth's too thick, then it's just a bad situation. You need a good burp cloth that's very malleable and able to be squeezed in between that area. <laughs> and then the next kind that we love, also from Amazon, great price, is the Hip Hop Panda brand. I don't know where I found this, but I ended up ordering some and I love these. Again, they're very big. You can throw them over your shoulder very easily. And if your baby spits up on the back, you're good to go. Takes up a good amount of square footage. And then the last brand, which is the softest and also the prettiest in my opinion, if you don't want just kind of classic white burp cloths, and I would recommend getting these Burt's Bees ones. They're a great material, very soft, and they come in a bunch of different fun prints or designs and colors. This is a set that came, I think they come in maybe a pack of three or six. So I love all three of those brands of burp cloths. I will say I know people really love copper pearl burp cloths because they're pretty, but we didn't love them. So we have them, use them wouldn't purchase them again though. And then the other feeding essential that we've really been using mostly over the past three or four months, so since she was maybe two months old, are bibs. Definitely a key to have on hand, especially when your baby starts teething or starts eating solid foods. We use these every single day and this is an item that I do love Copper Pearl in. They have great bibs, really pretty, designs too and you can get them to kind of match their outfits we put these on Cameron anytime we go on a trip especially if she's sitting in her car seat that way if she is drooling or spits up doesn't ruin her outfit that she's wearing in the car um, and then we put one around her every day on her high chair whenever she's eating her solids so these are great to have the last feeding essential that we use pretty much daily is gripe water and syringes so Cameron is very hiccupy, kind of spits up a lot. She's been that way since she was born and gripe water has been amazing, our lifesaver as far as curing her hiccups. We started using this around two weeks. I think that's the recommended age to start and we still use it to this day. This is our favorite brand. It's the Little Remedies brand. We tried other brands and this is the one that she likes the best. The other hack that I wanna to give to you moms out there is if your baby takes a passy and you have trouble consoling them anytime during the day, take the passy. Stick it in the top of this gripe water and shake it up and then put the passy in their mouth and they can suck on the gripe water through the passy. It works wonders. It's also great for colicky babies, fussiness, gas, so many things you can use this for. Highly recommend, it's a must have for us. I think this is our third bottle or so. And then the last feeding, it's not a must have, it's not a necessity by any means. It's an investment, but in my opinion, it's well worth it. It's a nice to have, is the Baby Brezza formula machine. I know there's people that are gonna be judging me for this because it's very easy just to put water in your bottle, warm it up in the microwave, put the formula in. But for us, we're always on the go. We're always just trying to get things done quick and Cameron gets hungry and when she's hungry, girlfriend is hungry. 
So for feedings and formula making, it is so nice. It's like sorcery. You just stick your bottle underneath. I'll show you a little demo uh, in a second, but you stick your bottle in there, push a button and it pops out your formula. You have your bottle ready in seconds and it's just been a nice to have for us. Again, not a necessity by any means, but something you might wanna put on your registry if you know you're gonna be feeding your baby formula. It just saves us so much time and hassle and is a nice to have. So I wanted to recommend that because I know a lot of people bash it and say it's not worth it, but in my opinion, it's very worth it. You just have to keep it clean and follow the instructions on putting it together and keeping up with it and it works wonders. Next category that I wanna cover is sleeping essentials. This is so important that your baby gets off on a good foot with sleeping. And I feel like we went through a lot of trial and error and a lot of this is gonna be specific to your baby when it comes to if they prefer to be swaddled or if they prefer to be in a sleep sack. Cameron, through all of her ultrasounds, had her hands right beside her face. And when she popped out, that's where she wanted her hands. So swaddling was not in the cards for us. We had a lot of swaddles that we didn't get to use because she hated being swaddled. So. I don't have any swaddle recommendations. I do know that the copper pearl ones are super stretchy and we did try those for a little while. They were the easiest in my opinion to use, but we just didn't use them because she hated being swaddled. So I will put a couple pictures of the sleep sacks that we used early on because those were the ones that were the most helpful at that time. The first one we tried were the Velcro swaddles and those were great. I'll put a picture here, but those were great because we were able to keep her arms outside of the swaddle and just swaddle up her tummy and her legs so that she felt secure without feeling confined. Um, we did like those for about, I would say six weeks. And then around the six to eight week mark, we switched over to the nested bean, which was great because it had a weight on the chest and it kind of made her feel secure and I could tell that she really, really liked that feeling. So I would definitely recommend the nested bean. However, whenever we are working with our sleep specialist, they let us know that the nested bean is not supposed to be used once your baby can roll over. So once Cameron started showing any signs of rolling over, we ordered the Woolino sleep sack. This has been such a great investment. These are expensive. I think they're in the $99 range, but they do run sales 15 to 20% off uh, every now and then. I will share on my Instagram anytime I see a sale, but these are amazing sleep sacks. They're made for all seasons. They're made to keep your baby temperature regulated. So they are heavy, they're really big, and they're made for two months all the way up to 24 months. So you can use this up until your baby is two years old. Cameron loves these. We love it so much that after several weeks of having this one, we bought another one. So now we have two in case she spits up on one. They, again, they are an investment, but they're so worth it. They zip up the side and it's a double zipper. So you have another zipper at the bottom if you need to do some nighttime changes. And then they also button at the very top and they button on the sides too for whenever your baby is really little and that's too big of an armhole, you can tighten up that armhole. Probably my number one recommendation for sleeping is the Hatch Sound Machine. This has been amazing and you can travel with this. It's very small, very portable, and Cameron sleeps with this during every nap and every night. It is the best. So you're just gonna touch this and you can set the um, settings on an app on your phone. And the one that she uses is just the white noise. So I know you can also use this as your baby gets older as kind of a color system and they're not allowed to leave their room until the color is green. I think my sister and brother-in-law do that with their three-year-old. But right now we just use it as a sound machine and you can also use it as a nightlight. This is incredible. I think it's around $60 and I would buy this time and time again and put it on my registry time and time again if I were to do things over. So one of the most asked questions that I get is snuggle me or dock a tot. And I hate to say it, but we used both at different time frames. The snuggle me was our lifesaver for the first three months because Cameron hated the dock a tot. We ended up trying to put the dock tot in one room and the snuggle me in another and she hated the dock tot so much that we just had to transport this one in between each room. She would nap in this whenever she was younger. She slept in this at night. I do want to give a disclaimer. I don't think they market this to be slept in. I think you're supposed to only do um, like parental watched naps in this, but we 
had her sleeping in this in her bassinet. So this fits in most bassinets. It really does just shape around their body once you put them in here. And she loved it. She felt so secure and this was a must have item for us for the first three months, but she did grow out of it as soon as she hit three months. So that's when we switched to the Daca Tot. This one I think is 99 or they may have upped their prices recently, but it's way worth it. And I highly recommend the Snuggle Me. However, if you are not interested in the Snuggle Me, the Daca Tot is great too. It's not as plush as the Snuggle Me in my opinion. It's definitely more firm, but it's a great sleeper. Um, again, I don't think that they market this to be slept in, but we did use it for her to sleep in in her bassinet. And once she was bigger and kind of fit in this middle area, it worked really well. So I love both. I just think it's a preference thing. And if Cameron hadn't tried the Snuggle Me, maybe she would have liked the Doc Tot more, but we put her in the Snuggle Me first. She loved that. So she didn't love the Doc Tot until she was bigger. But if you were to just pick one, I would recommend the Snuggle Me because that's gonna be when your baby is gonna be the most impressionable with their sleeping and you can get them on a good sleeping schedule and kind of get them comfortable with being outside of the womb. And then the last sleeping, again, this isn't an essential and it's not a must have, but it is the biggest nice to have. And especially if you're somebody who travels a lot or you're on the go or you don't have your nursery put together yet. We, whenever we had Cameron, were in an apartment and then we moved to my parents' house and we finally came here and we still don't have curtains. So up until now, we still use our slumber pod. It has been a lifesaver for a good sleeping environment for Cameron. It's basically a tent. I'll show you in a moment because Cameron's using it right now in our bedroom. You just put the blackout tent over top of a pack and play or a crib or a bassinet, even a twin bed, and it makes a blackout environment for your baby to sleep in. I'm actually kind of nervous about putting curtains in here because she's been so used to sleeping in a fully blacked out space that I hope she is okay with just a little bit of light. <laughs> so we'll see. But it has ventilated flaps. You just zipper it open to get into your baby. Um, it's breathable and there's even a little area you could put a camera in or a fan. It's just the best purchase ever. If you are somebody who travels, somebody who's on the go, we're going to the beach in May and I know we'll get a lot of use out of the slumber pod and we won't have to put Cameron in a closet or a bathroom. We can just put her right beside our bed and put the slumber pod over her and know she'll be good to go. As far as playtime must haves, this is my number one. And I know it's obnoxious, it's so colorful. If you have a home aesthetic, and you don't want to stray from that, this isn't for you, but this was Cameron's all-time favorite toy. She played with this daily. I'll try and find a video that I can insert. This is what I call the rainbow piano mat. So we used this religiously until Cameron was, gosh, I would say about six months old. Um, she just laid on this mat and she kicked the tar out of that piano. It was so great. If you have a friend who's having a baby, get the rainbow piano mat. It's awesome. And then the next thing I wanted to recommend is a tummy time toy. This is something we should have gotten the moment Cameron was born. I bought this for my best friend Ashley before she had her baby because we didn't do tummy time early enough. And this was a great toy for Cameron to have to work on her tummy time, work on rolling over. We bought this when she was, I think four to five months old. And within one week of getting this, she was rolling over one week. It was crazy. So this is an awesome toy to have. You can start using this as soon as your baby's born, I think, or as soon as tummy time is allowed. Uh, check with your pediatrician, but this is great. It has, you just lay your baby on the top of this on their tummy. Say hello to the giraffe and his friends. And they can push the buttons, play with this and have tummy time. My final two recommendations for playtime items are the Baby Bajorn Bouncer and the Activity Play Center from Skip Hop. The bouncer we started using, I would say when Cameron was a few weeks old and she bounces to the moon in that. I'll try and find a video. If I can, I'll insert it here. Um, she still uses it to this day. It's what she sits in whenever she watches Sesame Street. She loves that thing. We take it with us everywhere we go. It just folds right up. I know there's a lot of bouncers out there, but this one is one that I would highly recommend. It's also very easy to wash. She's spit up on it. She's had blowouts on it and it has come right out. 
So we love our baby Bajorn bouncer. And then at the activity play center, we actually got her, I think it was around five months when she started using that, but we wish we would have gotten it sooner. It is a great little station for her to work on keeping her neck strength up. And she sits in that, plays in it. I'll put a picture here. Um, she loves that thing. As far as baby clothes go, I have one recommendation and one recommendation only. For the first three months, maybe even six months of your child's life, do not buy cutesy clothes. I hate to say it, unless you're somebody who is just all about your baby's fashion, you won't wear them. I cannot tell you how many things I purchased that still have the tags on them to this day because we just never put Cameron in them. We constantly wear onesies, zipper onesies. Do not get buttons. We have not a single thing that has buttons down the front because they're just hard to deal with. I would recommend getting, you know, five, six, seven good quality zipper footies. That's what we did. I'll share some of the brands that we love. Little Sleepies, the best, so soft. And then Kite Baby, these are great as well. Another one we love is Angel Deer. We have a few of these. Uh, Caden Lane, Caden Lane has some great baby onesies. That's actually where we got Cameron's coming home outfit. It was a little knotted gown. The Burt's Bees line at Target has some awesome onesies that are zippered. And then Little Bum Bums is another brand that we love. So I'll link all these brands below. That's where we buy from time and time again. Really the only cute outfits that I get Cameron are the ones that I need for milestone photos or if we have a trip plan, something that I want her to look cute in specifically. But guys, zipper onesies all the way. They're easy, they're comfy. They're great. So another nice to have item that is a little bit random is this drying rack. With those nicer baby brands like Little Bum Bums, Kite, Little Sleepies, you don't wanna dry those. And instead of having them just hanging all over our kitchen and bar stools, I got this from Amazon. That way I can just throw her clothes over this and dry on this and keep it in our laundry room. Okay, last thing I wanted to add because this is not a necessity, not a must have. It is a nice to have and probably our biggest nice to have, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it takes your stress and like cuts it in half probably. Yeah, we didn't use it for the first few weeks that she was born. We just were lazy and tired and hadn't slept and we We didn't, didn't know how to work it. Yeah, we didn't know how to work it, but every night I would go to sleep and I would be freaking out because mm -hmm. I didn't know if Cameron was breathing or, you know, there would be so many times where we would get up and we would put our ear to her mouth to make sure mm -hmm. that she was okay. You just freak out when you're a first time parent. The outlet sock takes away all, all of, of those worries. Mm -hmm. um, this is not sponsored in any way or anything like this is just something that we love we even we were sent to the outlet but i spent our money on another outlet for my best friend for her baby shower because that's how much we love it and believe in this product so it's just a sock that your baby wears you put the pinky right there you wrap it around their foot and it will track their heart rate and their oxygen i know there's a little bit of a change they just released a new outlet dream sock i think but this is the one that we have and it's incredible. If you are questioning whether or not you should buy it, do it. Do it. Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed seeing our baby zero to six months must haves. This was fun to share. And if you have a baby who is six months or older, leave your top favorites in the comments below. That way you can help other moms out. Um, and let me know what we need for the months to come if you do have a baby that's over six months because we are always on the hunt for the next toy or next item. It's gonna help Cameron progress and learn and hit milestones, so let us know. But hope you enjoyed this and also leave a comment with any video suggestions that you have that you want me to share, you want Kendall and I to do. Again, we'll have more vlogs coming and we have some other fun ideas headed your way. So be sure you subscribe, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Otherwise, we will see you in our next one.